Tim, thank you very much indeed. Um, delighted to be giving the second Richard Sandbrook Memorial Lecture. Delighted to be sharing this evening with Mary and other members of the Sandbrook family, and indeed with the trustees of the Richard Sandbrook Memorial Trust, which was constituted some time ago to sort of do vaguely useful things around the uh, memory of Richard. I'm putting the word vaguely in there uh, with good intent. Um, I'm slightly worried about the reference to entertainment that has been already foisted upon me twice by the only other two people who've spoken this evening. I'm not sure I'm really doing a big entertainment piece uh, this evening. And my title is a really serious title. It is indeed The Psychodynamics of Optimism in an Apocalyptic Age. That is a serious title. I know it's a serious title because I've just been invited to contribute an essay of that title to a collection for a psychological journal published in the Czech Republic. <laughs> and I'm sort of reflecting a bit on the irony of having to write something around that theme for a journal, a psychological journal in the Czech Republic, and still wondering whether there's some special trick I'm going to have to bring to bear on this. But actually it struck me as a really interesting issue because we are all of us stuck in this incredible trap of needing to reflect this agenda in all its really staggeringly awful significance without pitching yet more people over into a state of complete and utter despair and disempowerment. That is part of our challenge today and I was reminded of this very tellingly last week when the Hadley Center, the Met Office's Hadley Center, published its new research into the impacts of climate change on the UK. They've been beavering away at this for the best part of four years. It's an extraordinary piece of work. It breaks the UK down into blocks of land, 25 square kilometers, and it looks at what the likely impacts will be through to 2050 and beyond. The regular impacts, high probability impacts, and then extreme impacts when things get really grim. And I don't know if you saw this report in the newspapers last week, but it, was, it produced a little map that had lots of orange blobs on it showing the average temperature increase to be anywhere from 1.8 through to 2.2 degrees centigrade by the middle of the century. High probability. Pretty extraordinary to be told that we're going to hit this two degree centigrade average rise by the middle of the century, because we've all sort of been hoping that we might be able to postpone that moment until the end of the century. And the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is certainly up for that. I had to give an interview for Radio Stafford. And during the course of this interview, they thought it would be helpful to listen to one or two people who'd phoned in during the day when they'd asked them what they thought about average temperatures going to 2 degrees centigrade, increase of 2 degrees centigrade by the middle of the century. And they played back to me some of these little vox pops that they'd had. And by and large, out of the sort of eight or nine people, six and possibly seven were positively upbeat at this news. <laughs> this was really very good news on the whole, because it meant more sunshine without having to fly to find it. So it would arrive in their backyard with, as far as they could tell, minimal discomfort, no additional costs, and this by and large represented a significant improvement in the quality of their life. Haven't we done well? Was the kind of thrust of these Vox Pops. And I thought, come on, play me the ones that say, oh, shit, we're absolutely screwed. Give me a little bit of a taste of someone who recognizes what it means if we go to two degrees centigrade increase by 2050, and what it means for the southern Mediterranean, and what it means for North Africa. They said, no, no, we can't, we can't, we haven't got any of those. And at the same time, that day, I also had to read, to do a review of it, this extraordinary report from Kofi Annan's <coughs> Global Humanitarian Forum called The Anatomy of a Silent Crisis. And I can strongly recommend this. It's an incredible report. I mean, we all read umpteen reports these days, but it is an absolutely astonishingly powerful and eloquent account of the full impacts of accelerating climate change on developing countries and on the world's very poor. So on the very same day that I was being invited to contemplate the joys of an average two degree centigrade rise here in the UK, one was plunged into the despair of a report of that kind 
that basically said everything that makes those people's lives miserable today will be exacerbated by the impact of this series of, of phenomena.